it's money. Well, somebody's oh, got to pay oh. for it. It's all, oh, I talk to the customer. Yeah. And they, yeah, they're going to pay for it. They're good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, oh, it's I, all a money thing, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. okay. Numbers, just, numbers, numbers, right? I just have to make oh, sure okay. that this young man's salary is being paid by somebody other than the count. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, all that's good. All right. No. Stay. All right, sir. All right. Continue on. Thank, Thank you. you. Looks great. All right. You're Goodness. happy now? Thanks for keeping my blood pressure down. Well, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, good morning, depending where you are in the world. I'm Mark Sugiyama from, uh, <laughs> from Eclectic Arts, based here in Seattle, Washington, and welcome to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio on Friday, January 29th, 2021. It's kind of crazy to think that um, on Monday it'll be February 1st, so we're a month already into 2021. It's like uh, I was talking with my other uh, guest earlier today that Part of this timeline seems like it's taking forever, and then some of it's just like super quick at the same time. So it's a kind of a weird uh, kind of situation. But hopefully, having a nice Friday, and um, hope you have a, a great weekend as well. And uh, let's kind of get into things. I'm really excited to talk to my guest today. And my guest today is the manager responsible for every aspect of Counts Customs in Las Vegas, Nevada. Many of you know him from the hit television show Counting Cars on History. He is the Mac Daddy of Las Vegas. Please welcome to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio, Mr. Kevin Mack. Let's bring him in. How's everybody doing? How are you Good. doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great, Kevin. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I, was, I was watching the show, and I'm kind of thinking that um, it was interesting. From the show, yeah, we, the fans learn certain certain things about Kevin. Um, you know, being the Mac Daddy and your dogs and your your son and everything else. But <laughs> right. when I was when I was doing some research on you, there's not a lot out there on your background. Um, so either you did a really good job of hiding all of that, <laughs> or there just isn't much there. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting to know you better. All right. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think that's just luck. I don't know. Uh, uh, I know that. People have their whole worlds on 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 the uh, internet, and thank thank the Lord above that uh, some of my life is secret anyway. But you know, when you do reality TV or you do anything, uh, you kind of put yourself out there, you know. And and so um, a lot of people know a lot about you from from reading, and you know, people say things and do things, and you know, anything you do is magnified. So. Um, you know, a, a lot of people uh, find out a lot of things, but to know that part of my life is secret still, that that's good to know. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be nice to know that yeah, not everything's out there for people to, you know, read about or, you know, pick at or any of that kind of thing, especially in this right. day and social media and all the other kind of things that are at our disposal. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's, it, trust me, anything you didn't read, it's not that interesting anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's kind of start with the, the present and we'll kind of jump around on the timeline. So like we were talking about pre-show and you're based down in uh, down in Las Vegas. How are That's things great. right now um, in terms of COVID and the, the pandemic? It sounds like things are starting to open up a bit down there. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we've been, you know, uh, they locked us down pretty hard at first, uh, closed all the casinos, the strip, which was really bizarre. I, I was born here. And uh, so, you know, being in, in uh, Las Vegas, I mean, I, I left for college and I lived upstate New York for, for a little bit in Southern California for a little bit, uh, even did a few months in Utah. But, um, you know, I've never seen and I mean, I grew up here in, in the 60s and the 70s. I was a kid and, uh, you know, we've never been closed. A casino closing. I mean, that's just unheard of. So. We, we've, we've kind of gotten to the point now where the casinos are open, the strips open, uh, they're doing 25% in the restaurants and the bars. And, uh, but you know, things are, things are going, going better here. We're, we're having less cases, um, less people are dying, which is fantastic. And, uh, so we're hoping in the next few weeks to even open up a little bit more and as you know, um, Danny has a rock club, uh, Counts Vamped. And uh, so we've been open a couple days a week just as the restaurant. We can't do any live music yet. So we're kind of, uh, you know, getting excited because we know a lot of bands want to perform right now, including, 
our own uh, Count 77. Uh, so it should be interesting. I think we're going to be really busy. And, you know, uh, it's interesting because you remember, well, in history, reading history, they had the Spanish flu in 1918 and 1919. And when we hit the 20s, you know, that old saying, the roaring 20s. And it was. It was it was crazy. Well, I think that's what's going to happen here and everywhere else throughout the world uh, when we get everything under control, we get some herd immunity going through the vaccines and things like that. And I think we're going to have the roaring 20s all over again. And we are in the 20s, which is interesting. That's a, that's an interesting uh, perspective on it. And I, I hope you're right. Um, I think it would be amazing to have uh, our own version a, um, a century later of, you know, the, of, the, of the roaring 20s and everything that came along with it. And, you know, God knows people are ready for it. <laughs> no. I, I, I truly believe that. I think uh, the tourism, wherever you're at, whether I know a lot of people like, you know, what's what's kind of cool with Vegas is it's one of those places where I guess if you're here for work, you're here for the big convention industry. That's one thing. But when you come to Vegas, a lot of times you can just take your brain and, and send it on your counter at home and leave it there. <laughs> come to Vegas and then put brain back in. So, you know, it's one of those things, uh, but I think the whole world, the tourism in the whole world, cruise ships, uh, you know, all these, you know, Hawaii, Mexico, all these places that people go and relax and lay on the beach and, you know, have some cocktails and, and things like that. I think that's, that's going to be huge soon, soon enough. Yeah. Here's hoping. Um, I know that when you mentioned the cruise industry, even here, right here in Seattle, I mean, our we had no cruise industry is completely decimated right. and uh the tourism that comes here during the summertime in seattle we get tours tourism up, up not to the standards of las vegas but we get our share of people from all sure, over the world sure. and yeah. Uh, yeah just like every other place where people want like you said you know check out your brain at home and go enjoy yourself all those places where people want to go it's been um you know just devastating and so people want to go back to that or even something brand new and maybe mm -hmm. they saw something online because they've been inside so much. So they've been looking at things like, oh, I want to go there when we can finally. Yeah. Go. Yeah. And maybe that's going to be like going down to going back to Las Vegas or going down there for the first time and checking out Counts Customs. And so, for you know, with the business, um, it sounds like you guys have been able to still, uh, you know, work on projects. Are you still doing the tours inside at times, too? So, at, for, yeah, yes, we are. We're back doing the tours. We, we do it from 10 to 4 uh, daily. Uh, if it's slow, we'll close a little early, but, um, yeah, we get a, you know, a few people in, um, nothing like before, before the pandemic, we were probably getting somewhere from, uh, 250 to, uh, sometimes 700 people daily. And wow. so, uh, we had a whole parking lot crew that ran the parking lot. So you knew where to park and, you know, uh, greeted you when you came in and, you know, we still greet you, but but it's it's we don't have as many folks around. We've cut it down, uh, but we still do have people that uh, help in the tour, explain the cars, what years they are, or what make and model they are if they don't know. Um, and 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 you know, of course, we used to sell a lot of T-shirts, so we want to get back to selling T-shirts <laughs> because that does help supplement the income. Um, you know, we we are still working. Um, we you know, uh, we were considered an essential business, um, because, uh, garages were allowed to be open. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we lost a few people who didn't want to take any chances, which we understand health wise. Uh, but we, we are still continuing to do projects and still working. We just do it very carefully. Um, you know, all, all the workers, uh, if they're in a particular building, we have three different buildings. So, depending on what area they're in, they're masked up, they're six feet apart. Um, we, we do everything we can. We have a, uh, a gentleman and all he does is clean. So he disinfects every, he just goes around all the buildings and he does that probably three days a week. So we, we try and keep things as clean as we can. And, uh, again, you know, um, we're, we're still, believe it or not, we are still filming episodes. So it's it's interesting because the whole camera crew is all masked and uh, gloved, 
and then and then when we get ready to shoot, we pull our masks off, <laughs> and uh, and and then we put them right back on. So you know, it's kind of interesting. But uh, right now, we're working on a ten episode order for the History Channel, and I believe the first run of the first five hours of uh, which are five episodes because now they're an hour long. I believe is uh, sometime in March they're going to try and get those out. End of March, first part of April, and then I think July the second set of five will come out. So, but we're, we're, you know, we're getting things done, which is amazing. And some of the problems we've had are parts. Uh, some of the parts places are closed because of COVID or they're out of business, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, a lot of the parts come, uh, unfortunately are made overseas. And so um, getting shipments is taking extra time and so on and so forth. So it, it, it's a little bit of a struggle, but I think it's better that we're open and it's better than being closed and, and not doing anything. So we're, we're at least we're able to do that. So we're thankful for that. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that sounds good. And I, I've, on a personal level, I've been dealing with this washing machine that's been a, a nightmare. Um, and But when you're talking about parts coming from overseas and being delayed, I've experienced that firsthand when yeah. maybe... Maybe it would only typically take you know three to five days to get something, and now it's taking a couple of weeks if I'm lucky. Um, That's because, right. Um, and sometimes it's not even just of it being overseas; it's also wherever plant it was being made at. Are there workers there? You know, how long were they shut down for? So, so it's just kind of this trickle down effect of mm -hmm. when can I finally get eventually get this part so that I can be back in business? You know, wearing clean clothes in my case. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. By the way, I love your background. The, the purple uh, wall there that you have. Oh, thank you. So so it's interesting because a lot of our shop has that same type of purple vibe that, uh, and we've covered big walls with it. Uh, oh, cool. we had behind it and then, and then do that. We had to have uh, special certificates from fire and safety and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of uh, been Danny's go-to color uh, his whole life. Wow. Well, I, I picked the right color then. <laughs> you did. Perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and, you know, Kevin, with your uh, your position there at Counts Customs and obviously mm -hmm. uh, being a part of the Counting Cars show, and you just said, you know, you're filming episodes and also trying to run the business, and we've got COVID going on. How do you kind of manage <laughs> all of those pieces, let alone, you know, the crew that's there, you know, they're working on the cars and the, and the bikes and everything. That's got to be like, you know, a, a, more than a full-time job. <laughs> right. You know, somebody recently asked me what I did for a living. I said, the, the proper question is, what don't I do? <laughs> because, um, you know, we have several businesses. So we have a tattoo shop that's inside the Rio Hotel now, the Rio Hotel was closed from uh, the second week of March of, of 20 until just the 22nd of December. So we had no tattoo, no tattoo work going on. Plus, you know, they were uh, at first they were all shut down. Then they reopened. But uh, so we just got that shop back open. Like I said, Vamped is open two days a week. Um, and then we have a music studio here on our Counts Customs property. But, you know, again, there's the, the bands aren't really performing. I think a lot of bands are writing new music right now, which I know Count 77 is as well. Um, you know, so it's been quiet there. Uh, it's been a little difficult, Mark. It, it's, been, it's been one of those things where you just kind of have to put your energy to where you can find the income. And then the other stuff just has to sit on the back burner and hope that you know, it stays there and nothing happens because, you know, when you don't have income coming in, it's, it's very difficult in it. And, and so it, it's, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, I, I always say we're part of the circus cause we're juggling so much, mm -hmm. but it's, it, and that's truly what it is. And, and, and look, we're not the only ones, everybody, including yourself, I'm sure has, has been, you know, has been dealing with this and having to find ways to, uh, to, to get things done. And so it, it's a challenge, but, uh, you know, we like those challenges and Danny and, and myself, we're workaholics. We work all the time. We've always have, 
So we'll just keep working and, and, and see what happens. There's, there's, uh, you know, not too many things we can do to change it. So right now we're just trying to get by and, and, and take care of our customers and, and try and get their vehicles done. Okay. Yeah. And that, you know, and that makes sense. And I, I was just thinking about something that uh, when I interviewed Danny back in June of last year, I think he told me that maybe the uh, like Las Vegas had like okay like tattoo shops to open but he said yeah but the, your shop was in the Rio which was closed so it's like it <laughs> didn't help you guys <laughs> uh, no actually or, what we tried to do believe it or not is we tried to rent some space at some other tattoo shops oh could have our artists in there and then we could uh it just didn't work out you know it just it was you know I get it people have their business they don't want to confuse things it gets a little confusing um, you know, because then people go, Oh, counts tattoo moved. And, and it would, it would have been just a temporary, so that didn't really work. Uh, but you know, our artists survived. Um, we've got, we had four wonderful artists. We got three out of the four back. In fact, our best artist, Dave Lou moved to your town. So if you need a, if you, anybody needs tattoo work in Seattle area, look up Dave Lou and, uh, he is unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll definitely see. Uh, I'll look up his name and see where he's where he's landed up here. Yeah, because yeah. um, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the shops around town. Um, when when I have money <laughs> to, to get ink done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, it's not necessarily a priority during a pandemic right now when I'm trying to just pay right. bills. <laughs> exactly. Um, but once once we you know down the road we're going to get past this and you know things are going to open up to what we knew um, you know before the pandemic and. So sure. with, again, with all those things uh, that you have going on and you said you and Danny are workaholics and all that, but um, it seems like you would be getting pulled in a, a gazillion different places, you know, and you specifically in terms of mm -hmm. you've got all the businesses and you've got, um, you know, the, again, the staff and the personnel to deal with and, you know, um, anything else. So you have like really good assistants that work with you or just like, I just work 24 seven, Mark. <laughs> no, no, no. Luckily, luckily I do have some wonderful uh, folks in our camp. Um, our, our accounter, our accounting person, Jeff, uh, Bush is fantastic. He's from the Tacoma area, or actually I, I think, uh, um, yeah, I can't, I don't remember exactly what city, but it, it's in the Seattle area. Okay. So he, he's from your neck of the woods. And then, uh, uh, Tony Parker is our general manager. He is fantastic. Um, we also have another gentleman, uh, we call him Billy because we have so many Ryans. His name's Ryan. We have so many. So Danny watches South Park quite a bit. And, uh, you know, the grandfather on there calls all the kids Billy because he can't remember their name. Well, this is the same thing. So, <laughs> so it's funny because Billy put it on his, on his, on his, uh, work on his card. So, uh, when he hands somebody a card, it says Ryan and then Billy in parentheses, Ton. <laughs> and, but Billy does all of our social media which we're still very active in our YouTube channel, which has been wonderful. Uh, we just teamed up with Ally Bank and we are doing a, a series right now on our YouTube. If you go to the Counts Customs YouTube, you'll see it where a gentleman in North Carolina, his name is John Heaster. John has four uh, Chevy dealerships in the area, in, in the North Carolina region. And so when he got closed down, he, you know, COVID happened and they, they, they had no business at all. So instead of laying off all of his mechanics, what he did is he bought 14 classic cars and he decided he was going to have set up teams and they were all going to uh, redo these cars. So we got wind of that and we thought this was a great story. So we contacted uh, John through Ally Bank, and uh, what we did is we, we decided to do this series together, and so they're doing these cars, and what they did is they got on the phone with Danny or on, on the Zoom, and they said, hey, Danny, what would you do? You know, and Danny said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys all three, three answers to three questions, um, so come up with three questions for each vehicle, and then I'll help you with those three questions. So that's what we did. All the cars are done now. And so now uh, we've got the last set of episodes that are going to air where the fans can vote. 
which car they like the best for a winner. All the money's going to go to charity. They're going to auction off all the cars. I think seven or eight of them made it through. And when we talked about this, I said to John, I said, you know, John, the toughest part about getting these cars done is parts, finding parts. And so several weeks later, he did. Uh, we had a call with him, and he said, you, you're absolutely right. I can't get parts. And so out of the 14 cars, only seven or eight of them made it. But um, but I think people are going to love it. They're going to dig it. Plus, John got to keep all those the, all those families fed and all those folks working, uh, you know, during during the shutdown. And um, they're doing good now. They're back open. They have business. And all these cars got done. And, and like I say, they're all going to go to auction and uh, the money's going to go to charity. So he did a wonderful thing and we got to be part of it. So um, we're, we're just blessed to be part of that. So that th different things that we're working on on the YouTube, when when things get going again, a lot of people go to Autoramas in different cities and um, great, great, great event. And we're going to be doing the uh, the autoramas on our YouTube series as well. So it ought to be a lot of fun. People get to see some really nice cars. I, I love hearing stories like that where uh, obviously we don't want to have to, you know, pivot during things, but we're left with no choice. So when someone like that figures out a way to keep uh, his employees on a payroll, um, also help out charities, get you guys involved, and it's just like, I, I'm, I'm kind of always just, uh, it makes me feel good in terms of that people have figured out ways to, to pivot during these times and sure. keep things moving. And um, again, unfortunately, we're in that position to do it, but I, I, I'm from small things to huge things. It's all, I love reading those kind of things or hearing about them when you yeah. see well, someone's doing this, someone's doing this. And um, I know I was a part of that and you know, Danny was on when I was doing the Alice virtual tour and I wouldn't be doing any of this kind of stuff had they not asked me because I never did it pre-pandemic ever. It was always in right. things. So um, now I'm at uh, like 110. Of these. Yeah, you've got a new niche, and yep. and and that's fantastic. And and uh, I've watched them, and and fantastic. You have a lot of great guests on. Um, so keep up the great work. It's it it looks like it's going very well. Thank you. Yeah, it it is, and I'm so lucky that as things kind of open up again and I go back to being at live events, I now have this other medium to do. So if I'm doing promotion for like a band that's coming to town and they can't do it in person, Hey, we can do it from your tour bus. We can do it from wherever you're at now because I've got this, this background to be able to make it happen. Um, so it's another tool in the tool belt. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do have one request though, is if you, uh, I, I guess I should, I have a contact. Well, I used to at Snoqualmie Casino in your area where we met mm -hmm. an amazing, what an amazing place. I mean, the view where bands perform, if, if, if anybody is in the Seattle area and you want to go see an unbelievable concert, <laughs> go to Snoqualmie casino, because that outdoor uh, event uh, stage overlooking that whole Valley with all the trees and the mount. I mean, that is gorgeous. And, they took such good care of us and, and Brian, my contact, uh, I don't, I haven't talked to Brian, so I'm not sure if he's still there, but man, would count 77 like to, uh, come there and perform again. I am in contact with Brian. So I will I'll put that in his ear because Danny said the same thing to me back. In, Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. In, in June, yeah. And I'm, I wholeheartedly agree. It's, it's, yeah. um, we're so fortunate to have a venue like that in that setting. And I'm, you know, less than an hour away from it. Um, so it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I'll see what, what Brian's up to and say, hey, what, when things start to get to the point where you can have entertainment there again, don't, yeah. don't forget this band <laughs> from, right. Austin, it's called Count 77. I'm sure he yeah. doesn't get you guys, but. No, um, no. It's Brian's just, a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just. It makes me itch and yearn so bad to see anything live. When I start talking about memories of like, you know, back 2018 and you guys were there at the end of July and um, we're doing the interview and I got to see the band and shoot everything. And you met my mom. And all that. Right. Your mom. <laughs> she, she was terrific. She was awesome. All this kind of stuff. But, um, you know, one thing I, I want to ask you, Kevin, is that there's not a lot of, of background. I mean, you mentioned things about you're you born in Vegas and then you spent mm -hmm, some time in mm -hmm. upstate New York, California, Utah. Um, but what were you like as a young 
young Kevin. <laughs> what was young Kevin like? <laughs> I'm just kind of curious. You know, uh, wow. You know, I I was um, I was one of these people that uh, it's funny. I mean, I, I I got into physical fitness probably about when I was about twenty years old, nineteen twenty, and I just uh, when I was in college, and I kind of got into you know the bodybuilding arena a little bit. And, um, I've always been kind of a smaller guy, you know, um, I think when I graduated from high school, I weighed 150 pounds. So, uh, I did a lot of running though. I ran cross country in high school and things like that. So I never was able to gain any weight, but after, after high school, I started, uh, eating more food and, and lifting weights and I did some bodybuilding competitions and I went to school in Reno and I, uh, the first one I ever entered was called the Northern Nevada Championships, and I ended up winning the whole show. Not only my class, I won the overall, and I I, I couldn't believe it. I was just, I was blown away. I, I, again, I'm not a big guy, but I was in great shape at the time. I had dieted, you know, to perfection and, and really, you know, had done well, but uh, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, those little amateur shows are fun and stuff, but to go to the next level, you really have to be built. Um, you know, you really have to have that muscular build and and the big legs and the big upper body. And I just, you know, there there was no point for me to to go down that road. So, you know, it was just uh, wanting to. I still go to the gym to this day, and um, and I try and eat the best I can. I do have my cheat moments, but um, but I've always been, you know, I've always tried to take care of myself in that regard, but. Um, you know, I kind of just got into focus on, you know, personal training. And then I, from there, I went into, um, workers comp, uh, don't ask it's, it's a long story, but I ended up in workers compensation after college in Southern California. And, uh, I did quite well for myself. Um, I, I had worked for a doctor for a short, for short time and then I figured out a little way that I could kind of open up my own business and help bring these injured workers to the professionals, the, the specialists, mm -hmm. you know, uh, cabinet makers. You know, there's big cabinet uh, companies in Southern California and these these uh, these workers would hurt them, their hands, cut their hands or hurt their hands. And so I found a hand specialist that was amazing. And so. I started marketing these doctors to these insurance companies and they were using these doctors. So I had set up a little business. Well, then I came back to Las Vegas because there was a healthcare company that was looking for a person to run their workers comp division. And so I came back to Vegas to do that. Um, that lasted a couple of years. Uh, the laws in Vegas are a little different. They run the workers comp through the state, whereas California, it's like you're buying insurance for your vehicle. It's, it's pretty much the same. So you, you, you had a lot of freedom to choose your doctors and do some different things. Well, in, in the state of Nevada, it works a little different. And I think I just got bored. It, it wasn't where I was going out to meet all these people and talk to them and go to lunch and talk to these doctors and, and all this networking. So it got a little stale and I just needed something different. So I just wanted to go to the next level and try something new. Well, I got into the, um, you know, I had mentioned before about the conventions. Mm -hmm. I got into the convention world and um, I just, I started working as a laborer building exhibits in the convention hall, but we were part of the Teamsters Union. So we got a very fair wage and the, the work was, you know, at times would be a little hard, but you'd, you'd work three or four days, set up a convention while the convention runs, you have those days off. So you'd work three, four, five days, have two, three days off. And that was kind of nice for a while. And you made good money. Um, but I got into management. And so I left the union and stayed in the convention business. And I ended up uh, being in that whole uh, convention business for about 15 years. And then um, Danny, myself, uh, probably uh, another... 10 guys, we used to ride motorcycles. We would all, you know, we'd go, we'd go pl different places. We'd go to Arizona. We'd go to Laughlin. We'd do all these motorcycle rides and runs. 
And we started doing that, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. So I met Danny through riding motorcycles. And one day, Danny and I just had a conversation like friends do, drinking a beer, just, you know, shooting the breeze. And the next thing you know, he's like, yeah. Uh, and, and, and me, during that convention period is when Danny opened Counts Customs. So we, we had a little chat and, uh, next thing you know, he's like, you know, I, I really need a manager. I just don't have anybody to run. You know, things are starting to go a little crazy. I need somebody to, that's organized to run things. Do you know somebody? And I thought about it for a couple of days and I called him and I said, Danny, I think I'm your guy. And he goes, really? And I go, yeah. I said, the convention industry has been great. Um, I was traveling, I was in management, a lot of long hours. And then you're, you know, you're dealing with uh, workers who don't want to work sometimes. And, you know, it just got so like, okay, it's 15 years. I think I need to try something else. So I've been here for 16 years now. Wow. And, uh, that's kind of how it went, really. Yeah, that's, um, you know, uh, I messed around as a bartender for a little bit. That's why I was in upstate New York and Utah. Um, believe it or not, I know Utah people, I mean, there's, there's not a lot of alcohol. Well, there is now. There's more. The The laws have changed a little bit. But this was in Park City, which is a tourist community. And uh, their laws were a little more lenient than Salt Lake City and some of the other smaller areas. Um, but Park City was great. They had a state-owned liquor store. But I, I tended bar there, and I tended bar, um, you know, like I say, upstate New York in a small town called Ithaca. And then uh, it's where Cornell University is in Ithaca College. So during the year, you know, there's 30 or 40,000 students. So bars got pretty busy. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Did that for a while. And then I even tended bar when I first started working in the convention business. I was one of the opening bartenders of Harley Davidson Cafe on the Las Vegas Strip. So that was a lot of fun. And I uh, got to open that. And uh, then I worked at some local places. Uh, and then, you know, as I got busier with, with the uh, convention industry, I just did that. So that's, that's pretty much my background. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, I, as you mentioned before, uh, big dog lover. Big, you know, I just I, I love having dogs as pets. They're, they're fantastic. Um, but I had the two little ones that I think maybe you saw on the show uh, Ellie May and, and Tinks, and they both have, have since passed. Um, but one day we got a call from my mother-in-law who lives in Utah, who had picked up a, a, a woman in her town had given her this dog. And, um, she is a, let's see if I can remember this blue healer border collie mix mm. and talk about energy. I mean, they're herding dogs, right? So they're up, as soon as the sun's up, they're up, they're ready to work. And when the sun goes down, they're ready to go to bed. And that's just how they are. And it's amazing. Um, but one day I was just kind of messing around in the backyard and I had this old Frisbee and I threw it and she caught it. And I thought, okay, she got lucky. So then I threw it again. I didn't think she caught it. I didn't think much of it. So my wife takes her to the park with the Frisbee and starts throwing it far and she was catching them, like tracking them down and actually catching them. So I'm like, I got to see this. So I go to the store. I buy some, you know, Frisbees that, for dogs or, you know, some different ones. They, the plastic ones seemed kind of hard. So I got some softer ones. Uh -huh. Started whipping these Frisbees around. This dog is amazing. And I've been, I, I always, I, I tell my wife, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing halftime shows here shortly. <laughs> with the dog because she is that I mean this dog lives for frisbees yesterday I went to PetSmart I brought six frisbees home she comes and sniffs the bag looks at them she starts going crazy you know she loves new frisbees cuz she chews up the other ones so she likes them new um but we're going to shoot a scene next week here in Las Vegas at a park and and what it is it's the whole story around this, uh, if people watch the show, they know I have a 69 Cadillac. Well, I didn't like the interior 
on the first go around. So we, we switched the interior. We, we changed the whole interior of the Cadillac and did some upgrades. And um, Horny Mike on the show uh, had made some callers for Tink and Ellie Mae. And so I asked him if he could make one for, for her name's Izzy, if, if he could make one for Izzy. So he's like, absolutely. And I said, can you match it to the, to the car? And like you did the other ones. So he did it. He's got it done. We're going to go shoot the scene next week at a park and you'll be able to see this dog. It, unbelievable uh, how she catches Frisbees. It's just, it's just amazing to me. <laughs> awesome. I, I, I can't wait to see that. Um, I, I, as you were telling that whole story, I was picturing all these kind of things in my head and I was actually going through those. I don't know if they're competitive dog things where they actually have them like jump off of like really tall things and they eventually land in a pool for distance, but they chase a Frisbee or yeah. chase something. Yeah. Uh, dock diving, dock okay. diving. Yeah. So interesting story. I was on the internet and I was just looking to find if, if there was any dog Frisbee clubs in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, I don't know anything about how, how they do this. I just throw the Frisbee and she catches it. So, I started doing some different things with her where you throw the Frisbee and then tell her to drop it. And then she drops it and then you hold up a Frisbee and, and she comes and jumps and grabs it and runs and catches another one in the air and then having her jump on my leg and then jump grabbing the Frisbee. And, and so I, I, I find this, this, this guy on the internet and he actually does a Frisbee dog show here in town. And, but since COVID he doesn't do it. He was at the, the hotel called the Excalibur. He was, his show ran for about four years there. And then uh, there's a, uh, it's called the Springs Preserve here. And um, it's really kind of a nature setting. And he was doing, uh, he was doing the, a show there at the Springs Preserve for a while. And uh, so we, him and I were talking and I told him who I was. And he goes, I watched the show. I know exactly who you are. And he goes, I'll have you over to the house. He goes, will your dog dock dive? And I go, what's that? He goes, well, I have a dock and she runs off and then see how far she jumps and they have competitions. I said, you know what? If there's a Frisbee involved, she'll do it. So we have yet to get together, but I have a pool and I've been doing that with the pool and she has no problem doing that. <laughs> she, she, she's in that pool. If I let her, you know, in the wintertime, obviously we don't, we haven't been using it, but in the summertime, I can't keep her out of there. And, uh, but the, I, I tell you, if you have a dog that swims a lot, the vet told me you have to make them take breaks because if you don't, they ingest so much water that they can drown internally. So you have to make sure every couple of hours you give them a break and, and let them dry out a little bit because they drink so much of the water. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, when you're saying that she's, um, a mix of a blue healer and a, a border collie that took me back to college. I went to college in the central part of Washington state, which is very, uh, it looks like you're in the Midwest. It's nothing like mm -hmm. Seattle at all. And I remember when I was looking for a dog I went, and I didn't know anything about breeds at the time. I went to this, uh, however I found these people through a classified ad or something. And, um, they had blue healer pups and, <laughs> Oh my, just like you're saying, the, the amount of energy. Out of those dogs. Oh my gosh. And it's, it's bred into their, into their genes. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. So it's like, oh, I'm the wrong person for this. I live in an apartment. I don't have a house or a yard or any other, you know, acres. I have nothing like that. So I knew this was the wrong dog for me, but yeah, that was my yeah. first exposure to him. So when you said that, I said, oh boy, <laughs> putting those two breeds together, man, keep yeah. you busy. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Um, with, uh, you know, I, I I know you're obviously a big dog lover and um, have you guys done anything related to, I don't know, like dog charity stuff over the years or I just don't think off the top of my head. Yeah, I have actually. Um, so we have the NSPCA here, mm -hmm. uh, the no kill shelter. And yeah, we've done uh, actually, uh, you know, um, they had contacted me to do some things and I, and I went to some events and did it. And then I got some of the other cast members, Mike, Horny Mike's a big cat guy. So he's, he's got like six, eight cats. Um, and uh, so I said, Hey, you want to, you know, do some stuff with these, these folks. He's like, absolutely. So we've done an event um, every year until a uh, COVID, which was um, one of the professional poker players has uh, a tournament 
at one at, at Planet Hollywood. And so Mike and I, for two or three years, I, I think it was three years, we did the poker tournament and it was sponsored. All the money went to the NSPCA. So it was fantastic. And then we got to play poker, which, you know, we both have no idea how to play, but it was fun. We had real serious poker players sitting at the table and, you know, had, they had like 20 tables set up. And um, so I was at one table, Mike was at the other, but you could just see the, the cause we didn't know what we were doing. The, the ones that have a lot of money invested or were serious. Oh, they get mad. If you, you know, they get, they, they don't say anything, but you can just see they're, they're steaming. And, and, you know, we did it for charity. We were just having fun, but uh, yeah. So we, to answer your question, yes, we have. Um, I, I know the gentleman that owns the property that the, um, the Dewey animal shelters on, which is the S you know, the NSPCA. And he, he wants to uh, do a huge addition to it. So, um, and I, I'm not sure if they've started the construction or not. I haven't been by there lately, but, uh, they were going to rebuild it and, and make it huge. And, you know, I, I, I love, don't ever kill an animal. No need to. There's always somebody out there that's looking for an animal. Um, I used to watch prices right when I was younger and, you know, Bob Barker always came out. First thing he said was spay and neuter your pet. And wow, is that important? I mean, people should do that. If you're not gonna look at, if you're not gonna uh, breed and 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 uh, set up a business with puppies, and you really gotta know what you're doing there. You can't just do it, you know, just to say you know you're you're breeding puppies. It, it's a lot. Um, but you know, I even get mad at Mike because I say, hey, did you spay or neuter your cats? He's like, not yet. And I go, come on, man, you got to do it because you know, next thing you know, they're, they're pregnant, having kit. And then what do you do? You know, it's just like people have to do that. Um, but we have so many animals out there that need homes. And, you know, I, I support some of the other ones, like, uh, there's a big one in Utah and I always do social media with them and, you know, and, uh, so I, I'm always, if they call me to, to, to do an event, I'm there, I'll do it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, not to get even further away from counting cars or car topics, yeah. <laughs> um, but you had mentioned to me prior to um, us going live that uh, there is a, a property down there in Vegas that you place your football bet. So, I mean, you must be a football fan. I am. I'm a football fan. Can I, can I ask you about that? Do you have a favorite team? Do you, are, uh, you, are you a Raiders fan? Are you somebody else fan? And what do you think about the Super Bowl? So here's, here's, uh, don't get mad at me, Mark, cause I'm a Ram fan. And I know if you're a, a Seahawks fan, <laughs> but, but I, I will say that my accountant downstairs, Jeff is, like I said, he's from your neck of the woods and he is a huge Seahawks fan. So him and I, every time there's a game, we go out, we have a lot of fun. Um, but I am a Rams fan. I've been a Rams fan since the seventies. Um, I remember a quarterback now, now you'll see my age, but um, Roman Gabriel played for the Rams. I mean, we're talking, you know, early seventies, late sixties, early seventies. So I remember watching football with my dad on the TV, um, black and white. And then we got a color TV and then um, it was just football, football, football. And then of course, I became a basketball fan of baseball. I always loved baseball. So yeah, I, I follow sports, avid sports fan. And yeah, so I'll go and, and, and bet. Um, I usually don't bet on my favorite team though. Cause that one's, that one's a tough one to, to do. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I followed them to St. Louis. I still rooted for them. Um, now they're back in LA and now we have the Raiders and it's like, what do I, you know, but the Raiders different conference. So Look, you know, I can root for both of them. Uh, over the last couple of years, I became a, a Golden Knights hockey fan. You know, um, I never really understood the game of hockey till I till the Knights came here and I sat down and kind of learned the game. And now I love it. Um, but, you know, but uh, going back to football, I am I, I know you never bet against Tom Brady. 
Uh, but I've I've got to go with with uh, Tyreek Hill and Mahomes. I got to go with KC. I you know what's interesting for me is that um, I've never been a fan of Tom Brady, um, and but there's some weird part of me, and I don't know if it's because he's with the Bucks now or that they're considered like the three point underdog. I think is the last spread I heard. Yeah. Yep. Um, is that there's some part, and I have nothing against Mahomes and those because I actually like Kansas City. But there's some part of me that maybe wants to see that little underdog thing win. And I don't know what's wrong with me because for, for most of my career or his career, I was like, I recognize he's one arguably the best quarterback ever, but I, I'm just not a fan of that guy. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think we're going to get a competitive game at least, not a blowout like how the Seahawks beat up on the Broncos when we got our, our ring. But um, Right, right. But um, – yeah, the Rams, they're, they've always been our bugaboo. It doesn't matter how well we're doing or maybe they're not doing it. When we come together, it's always – it's. I think even like stat-wise, I don't know how many wins the Rams have had over us, even you know before Russell Wilson and all that. But um, mm-hmm. we can never say, oh, yeah, we, we can take care of them because they're you know 2 and 10 right now. No, <laughs> never, never, ever. I, I, you know, it, it is – you're right. It's amazing with some teams – and, the, and all the players and coaches could change, but there's still that weirdness about you can't get over the hump with this team. And, yeah, I, you know, I was surprised that the Rams uh, went into Seattle and beat them. I really was. I thought they were playing horrible at the time, and I thought, wow, how are they? And they didn't have, you know, the starting quarterback at first. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought, how are they going to do this? And, and it, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty wild. Yeah, we laid an egg. <laughs> I, man, they, it's, it's one thing if you put you know everything out there on the field and then you still come up short, but we stunk. <laughs> and, it, yeah, it it was good for us for a week, and then we had to go to Green Bay and get our butts kicked. But now now they're saying I, I just heard today that maybe Matthew Stafford might be might be a Ram here soon, but who knows? Who knows? Wow, yeah, you know, I heard I listen to sports radio here locally, and they're always talking about um, uh, what uh, LA the general manager had said about Goff's future, and he said something about that in the present day he is a, he is a Ram or something goofy like that, saying mm-hmm. that they are probably going to bring in at least somebody to compete for that job just to kind of light a fire under him and kind of see where things are at. And Stafford yeah. would be a, he would he would be one yeah. of those to light a fire for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, goodness. Ooh. But, um, yeah, uh, so one thing I'll, kind of to, to wrap this up, Kevin, and again, I appreciate you taking so much extra time, actually. It's what, Abs- what, absolutely. Um, Counting Cars, correct me if I'm wrong, started in 2012, I want to say, was the first season. Is that? It was, I believe so. I, I believe it was August 13th, 2012 was our first episode, I believe. Okay, so with having done so that's what you're on your basically nine years x amount of seasons. I know, yeah, I yeah. Count seasons differently. Um, how are you going to look back when eventually the, the series is done and you look at that body of work that you guys have done? Um, how, what are your thoughts off the top of your head right now of how you would look back at the entire you know running seasons of counting cars? Uh, you know, wow. Uh, in, in one word, wow. It goes by so quick, Mark. It's it's unbelievable how quick it goes. Um, and I think I think the reason why is because you're so busy. Um, you're doing so many different things, and then you add travel into the mix. So Danny's band, you know, because we're filming so much, we can only do, we can't get on a bus and do a tour. We can only do fly dates. So, you know, at one time we were doing two or three a month. Um, and then we get, you know, the cast, um, Ryan, uh, Shannon, myself, and Horny Mike, we all go do meet and greets. And uh, so we're, we're traveling. I, I remember for a while there, I was traveling four, four weekends a month for probably five, six months straight. It was crazy. It was nuts. But wow, does that time fly? And then during the week, I have to come back, catch up on, okay, where are we at with this vehicle? What's the budget? Where, wh- how much work do we have done in it? You know, and, and trying to keep the guys, 
And, and, and I'll tell you this, um, the one thing about Danny is he is for real. Um, you know, a lot of these shows on reality TV, um, and I, and it's funny, I see, you know, um, headlines on the internet about this reality show is fake. You'll never see that on our show. The work we do and the stories with the people, that is all real. The only thing that we do is we supplement the fun stuff and make things funny to, to try and make it a little bit more entertaining. We're not a build show. You know, a lot of, there's some, um, there's some great shows out there for the, the geeky mechanics that want to really, how do you take apart this and do this? And we do show process and I know people, folks want more process, but that's not the show. The show is, it's more about the stories, the people. Um, and you know, we never thought it, it would be like this or it would last this long. Um, but for whatever reason, we just, we just think, uh, you know, God above that, that we're blessed. And let me tell you the one thing that Danny does and, and a lot of people we get, I get mail all the time. I get emails, people, you know, ask for help, uh, whether it's paying off their home mortgage or buying their, their, um, son or daughter a vehicle so they can get from point A to point B and things like that. And, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe because of Danny's car collection and the way we do things, but we're not a bank. We don't have that kind of money. Um, our overhead is huge. And if we charge customers for every hour we worked on their vehicle, every car would be a $200,000 car mm -hmm. because of the amount of work involved. Um, but it, it's just, uh, it, it's just, it's, it's crazy the amount of work. And, um, we, we, Danny always said, you know, we, we finish a vehicle and he'll, he'll, he'll do his walk around or his drive. And then he'll say, Nope, we got, we got to redo this or we got to redo that. And it costs us money out of our pocket and he doesn't care. He doesn't care. We take a loss. Every vehicle that's on the show, we take a loss. There is not one vehicle that has been on where we can say, you know what, we made a profit on that car. Maybe break even at, at the most, but, and, and people that do car restorations, we build drivers. There, there's people that build these grade eight cars for the Autorama. These, these are million dollar vehicles. And I, 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 I know, and people go, how do you get to a million dollars? I see it. I, I can tell you every hour that somebody is doing fabrication on a vehicle, or, or the mechanics that are rewiring, because pretty much we rewire every vehicle, pretty much. Um, but it, it's tough. It's expensive. But, you know, if you're going to do a show and you're going to be on national TV and in HD, it better be perfect. And so we take pride in what we do. We don't make money on the car restoration side. We have 40-some workers. And you think, how does that get paid? You know how that gets paid? Selling t-shirts. And that's how we keep this big machine running because I don't care what anybody thinks or says. And, and people that do car restoration, they'll tell you they make minimal money, if, if any at all, on profit. You just, how can somebody come in? You go, yeah, it's going to be $250,000. They're like, really? For a couple of fenders and some, some brakes and a LS3 engine? It, it's expensive. There's a lot that goes with it, um, and we we basically tear everything down to metal, and we start the process over because we know down in a couple of years, we don't want the paint to shrink back, and then you see all the body work we did, and, you know, we, we don't want that, so we do it right, and to do it right costs a lot of money, so we like building drivers so people go out and enjoy their cars. That, that they spent their money on, their hard-earned money. And uh, we, we employ people, we feed families. And Danny, um, and he probably told you this during his interview, um, he, he is, um, you know, he's, he's, he's been in the church his whole life. And he's read the Bible. And, you know, um, I get this from him. And, and not to be preachy, but when you give, you get back double. 
and and you know a lot of reading in the Bible is giving, and so uh, that's one thing that nobody can accuse Danny of not doing is giving. He he is the most giving person, biggest heart I've ever met. I even sit down with him sometimes and I go, Danny, we can't afford to do this or we can't do that. He goes, do it. Okay. You know, that's the way you want to do it. We'll do it that way. Um, I'm just the business guy. I I'm, I'm, I'm a numbers guy, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work, but it, you know, if it's him giving it works. And so he'll pull money out of his pocket to get it done and, and get it done. Right. And you know, you got to love that about him. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I had no idea that um, you know the profits weren't being turned on the restoration uh, of, the, of the vehicles that have been on the show. And uh, you're, no, you're absolutely right. I think at least for me, being on the fan side of things, when I first started mm -hmm. watching it all these years ago, there's definitely the human interest aspect of counting cars, and then how Danny came across. Even when he was on Pawn Stars before you guys had counting cars, mm -hmm. he's he's very genuine. It comes across that way. So I remember when I did that first that first phone interview with him. The day before Thanksgiving, I think it was 2012, that I was like, what's this guy going to be like? Is he going to be like the TV guy? Is he going to be like, you know, a little bit different? He was exactly yeah. the same way he was on the television show as he was on the phone. Obviously, we met in person a few years later. And you, all of you guys are just like you're down to earth. There's no you're not pulling any kind of punches and you're, right. try, you're trying to do things right. And I think that's mm -hmm. what people are really connecting with. And that's why the show has been on for so long and also you know, counts customs and all your businesses as well that they like how you how you do your business and yeah you know, that says a lot about you guys yeah i appreciate it mark it's you know it, it, it look at i i understand in the in the business world there are some there are some uh cutthroat uh business people out there business is tough um i know it happens in politics i know it happens all over the place and it's tough and to, to keep your head on straight do the right thing and to give back, it, it's difficult, and you're not gonna you're not gonna get rich from it. You're just not. It's you know you give a lot away, and um, and Danny, I tell you, if he can sleep at night, that's all he cares about. He he's not into the, you know, he's he's got some assets because he's got some cars that he invested in many years ago. That and 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 he's got you know some buildings that we're in, and that's fantastic. And he worked hard for that. Um, but it, it's a, it's a tough business. And, um, I, I think a lot of people see what he has and he goes, Oh, this guy's got so much money. It doesn't matter. It, it's not the truth. It, it really isn't. It, uh, you know, every, every month when, or every couple of weeks when we do payroll and we have to pay bills, we all stress. It's a stressful time. And so, um, but you know, we enjoy what we do and we get to meet a lot of people like yourself and we we have met some great people across this country and Canada, and uh, we we love the fans. They're they're and like you say, you know, it's funny the network. They're they're blown away because they're like, man, your fans follow you guys. If we change your time or your day, they don't care. They're there, and they 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 said that out of all their shows, we have the most loyal fans, which is wow. That that is that's awesome. So. We thank the fans all the time. We we love our fans, and um, and we're just blessed to do what we do. Yeah, uh, more power to you guys. And uh, you know, Kevin, I really want to thank you for taking so much time to talk with me. It's been fascinating and just really um, heartwarming for me to uh, connect with you and find out more about your background and you know the state of things uh, with Counts Customs down in Las Vegas. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, as we all are to the point when we can start getting back to, you know, bands at VAMP and you know, everything right. up and you have, you know, 700 people coming through Counts Customs on the tour and everything else. Um, but in, in the meantime, I hope you and your family stay safe down there in Vegas. Thank you, Mark. You as well, sir. You as well. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully you have a good weekend. It is the weekend, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> We're going into the weekend. So we don't have any football, but we got basketball and hockey, so we'll be all right. There you go. And then, yeah, and we got the big yeah. game next Sunday, so we can get prepped yep. for that. Yeah, right. exactly. Thank you. Stay safe, Mark. Love your content. Love love what you do. Love following you on social media. And, and, and uh, we, we just thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye, everybody. Take care.